Ma'ada Tep. Welcome. <clears throat> I am Priestess Satra Nidert Kefa Abe Manuk Ma'at. Um, my, my voice is a bit raspy. Um, I haven't been well for the past going on a couple weeks now. And voice has been um, up and down for the past several days. So going through some healing moments in my life and had to let go of some things or or things had to, events had to let go of me. So, um, hopefully you can hear me clear. This video is to express at least uh, two of the inserts of my book. They're titled Thoughts of a Conscious Black Woman. I have yet to memorize all of these and I'm not sure if I'm going to make that choice to memorize them all because there are more inserts that are going to be put in this book as well as there's going to be others, other divine women who are going to um, add as well to this book and have uh, some designs that uh, from a brother that I met after reading some of them he had visions of what he would like to draw with that so with this these inserts are dated as this one I'm about to read is dated April 23rd, 2012. And these are my thoughts of a conscious black woman. I think to myself, why did you give me your disease, your causes, your fight? This fight was never mine to begin with, but because you were too scared and weak to find your equal and balance with your man, and he was too weak to find beauty and strength in you, you passed your weakness to me. So for me to help you fight against your oppressor, your body isn't mine. It doesn't curve like mine. It doesn't move like me. It doesn't have the essence and aroma of my blackness like me. Yet you helped make me hate all that beauty, greatness, strength, and power that allowed me to be queens and goddesses while you were still the whore in your husband's eyes. I led wars and defeated those who were against me. I captivated the eyes of many, gave birth to gods and nurtured the earth while you still stand small behind him, oh excuse me, under him, where he gave you no respect, treated you worse than his dog. Why share your disease with me because he sees no equal in you? I watched my black king suffer by the hands of your men because he looked at you as if you were beauty beyond compare, because your man finally made you feel like something as we were being taught that white is pure and right and black is dirty and wrong. So my black kings began to see me as dirty, began to treat me like the whore and no longer saw me as the queen, the goddess, the mother of his existence. Now I'm fighting to be, to be heard, to be seen, to be treated with dignity and respect because my culture here has designed me to think less of myself and even lesser of my kings, to see you are pure to see your men, your men as gods. This is my struggle that wasn't originally mine to bear, but now that it is, as black women do, we rise above the disease that you gave us, you gave me. I fight to raise my young kings to see the beauty and darkness, the black queen, mother earth, mother universe, mother God. I am the warrior queen. You will find no other like me. No other can walk the shoes I stand in, the mind I speak from, and the love I'm rooted in. Now your man sees me as goddess and you, the black man's whore. I am that I am because I am who I was created and born to be of the thoughts and hands of all that is divine. I am not your disease anymore. And I am not fighting your fight. I am the cause and the effect. I am the beginning and the end. I am life and death. Without me, even you do not exist. These are my thoughts of a conscious black woman. I have so many of these that has come to mind in the middle of the night. And it's just so many to choose from. You know, and matter of fact, I want to read the latest one that I've heard. It was a, a voice that I heard within me. I was at the Best Western Hotel one day, and I hadn't written anything in over a month. And all of a sudden, I heard a young man's voice, and he was speaking out, and I could hear him. And his vibrations hit me, and I wrote what I heard. So this was dated August 10th, 2012. 
at the Best Western Hotel at 10.45 a.m. You who dresses nice with your Gucci bag and expensive cars, or you who got your sweet ass job for 10 years or more and go to church every Sunday spreading your cash, or those of you who go to college and think you are better than I who does not live the life you live, I have found you are no different than I, if yet that much more different than you can dream of. Yes, I wear my pants down low and my dress too high, yet you know of yourself, you know of yourself less. And the less material I have or produce, the better chance I have to know the truth of me, as I don't have the opportunity to hide behind my blinded wealth. I may eat McDonald's and fix my fried eggs at bologna, and you eat your lobster tail and snails. The poorer you conceive me to be, the richer I truly am, and the more you are just that poor. As you sit in your synagogues or your temples and churches listening to the preacher preach, I found that the man on that corner drawing nature's art or selling his oils knows more and have lived the truth of more and teaching the life instead of preaching it. I may puff puff give and you puff puff die. You develop cancer in your lungs and I am living high as it helps me to fall into consciousness to see what you may never conceive. Where, do you, where you find me dead, I am very much alive and where you find you have life, you are very much dead. So no, the more you condemn me, the best I know I am. You see, money may buy you physical freedom for but a time, yet the knowledge I come into will be, will be my key to free my mind, something that does not have a price tag on it. Here in this gutter, the ghetto, the hood, I have a better chance of learning and knowing me before you high above sedity and nose stuck up, high and mighty self and self-righteous, holier than thou will ever have. I am black. And you are not. I am a nigga and you think you're not. I am here and you are there. Truth be told, I'm everywhere. Till the next time you see me walk past your past and you clench your purse and look at me sideways, know that I lock my mind and cover it well. As truth, don't judge this book by its cover. As what's inside is beyond your thought. I like my dirty cover as it creates a clean inside. So what does that say of you? Another thoughts of a conscious black woman. That was just two inserts out of the many pages that I have and the, and the more that is coming so that I can complete this book. Um, I hope that I was able to say it so that you can understand me because I know that my voice is not how it normally sounds. And I'm still sniffing and everything, but I'm working on that. And now um, since I'm no longer working at uh, Bus Boys and Poets where I was at the uh, rest that I have <laughs> been desperately needing to be able to heal faster and to do the things I need to do I get to have and then this time is actually going to give me the time that I need to go ahead and start writing on my book and get the things done that needs to be done instead of using the excuse of getting the job that I got so I wanted to share this with my family I wanted to share this with you and I hope that you enjoyed those two inserts that um, I spoke on and I'm thinking I may do another one later, but now that I've learned that I have more time and more free space on my computer where it was acting up before and I was not able to do any of my online shows for a Raising the Feminine Principle, I now have that time and that space to do this. So look forward to hearing my new, uh, the new tales and information and truths and knowledge that I have come to and learned through my experiences that I hope that will bring enlightenment to your life and to your journey for, those, for you and those that are around you that you care for. Thank you again for taking the time to listen and view. I am Priestess Satra Nitert, Kefa Abe Manukma'at Hotel.